Hey everyone, welcome back to Bagel Top Games for this 200 subscriber special viewer's choice game. I'm really excited to try what you guys have picked today, and I know you're excited to find out what you've picked, so let's get into it. I'm happy to say we had 75 respondents for this survey, so a lot of different opinions on what went into the game, but regardless, there was a winner for each category, and that's who I'm going to use. So without further ado, let's find out who you guys selected. And you've done it! Dark Phoenix has won the Mastermind selection here by one vote over Galactus, who got second place at 14 votes, Zombie Green Goblin at 10 votes in third place, and fourth place was actually the first epic to get this high, Epic Poison Thanos with nine votes. We also had King Hyperion tie with Poison Thanos here, as well as Thanos with seven votes, Onslaught with six, and Hela also with six. Mysterio and Deathbird both with five, and a whole bunch with four and three, but we're gonna be using Dark Phoenix today, so let's go ahead and add her to the setup. I bet a lot of you are very happy about that. But almost as important as the Mastermind is the scheme, so what scheme is Dark Phoenix trying to carry out today? Did you guys make it easy for me? Uh, let's find out. And Nuclear Armageddon is the scheme today! I know some of you are happy about that. We almost had the Dark Phoenix Saga here with Go Back in Time to Slice a Hero's Ancestors and Avengers vs. X-Men all getting six votes. These were all tied for a while. We got one extra vote for Nuclear Armageddon that put it over the top. Some runners up here, Superhuman Baseball Game, Horror of Horrors, Change the Outcome of World War II, all with five votes, and then the Unbreakable Enigma Code featured in my last Let's Play, Ruin the Perfect Wedding, and Ragnarok, Twilight of the Gods, Capture Baby Hope, and Age of Ultron, all with four votes and a bunch with three. We got more with smaller amounts of votes, but these got the most. So, looks like we're going to be adding Nuclear Armageddon to the setup along with Dark Phoenix. Today, you guys are not making it easy for me. But what about the villain groups? We're not necessarily going to be using the Hellfire Club, Dark Phoenix's always leads group. We're going to go with what you voted for. Get your last minute guesses in, because here are the results. Okay, so the Four Horsemen have won! That's funny, because the last game we had Apocalypse without the Four Horsemen, and this game we have the Four Horsemen without Apocalypse, followed by Poisons with 10 votes, so both the Four Horsemen and the Poisons are going to be in this setup. I guess you guys really wanted to make me feel sick today. We've also got Maximum Carnage in third place with 9 votes, X-Men 92 in fourth place with 8 votes, and then Celestials with 7 votes in fifth place, followed by Zola's Creations, X-Men Noir, Illuminati, Hellfire Club, Great Lakes Avengers, Dark Avengers, and The Avengers as the runners up here, and a bunch more with 4 and 3 as well. So, interesting combo for Horsemen and Poisons, and also an interesting combo with Poisons and Nuclear Armageddon. I'll get into why that is the case later, but for now let's go ahead and add both of these villain groups to the setup. On to the henchmen. Now that you know what everything else is, the henchmen will be crucial in figuring out how this game is going to go. What did you pick? Actually, every single henchman got a vote except for one group. See if you can figure out which one that is. And the henchmen you picked for this game were... The Universal Church of Truth, the newest henchman to Legendary, will be added to this game. That means we're going to have a little bit of shard gaining in this game. The runners-up were the Sentinels at 17 votes, followed by the Brood, Multiple Man with 13 votes, Thorcor with 12 votes, Th Circus of Crime with 10 votes, Cytoplasm Spikes with 9 votes, and then a bunch of them with 8 votes and fewer. Now, the smallest two got maybe two and one votes, but there was one group that didn't get a single vote. And for some reason, that was the Shi'ar Patrol Craft. The Shi'ar Patrol Craft did not get a single vote in all 75 responses, which surprises me a little bit. I've used them a lot, maybe that's why. Anyway, let's go ahead and add the Universal Church of Truth to the setup. So, minus the Master Strikes, Game Twist, and Bystander, there's our entire villain deck. But what about the heroes? What did you select? Things got interesting with the heroes, so let's see what you picked for today's setup. Okay, a lot of choices here. A lot of different heroes were voted for, but the number one hero overall with 11 votes was Hulkbuster Iron Man. So we're going to add Hulkbuster Iron Man to the setup, as well as the Iron Man from the core set too. A lot of Tony Stark happening here. Now let's skip the sevens for a second. We had some runner-ups. We had Venom, Venom vs. Venom, Rick Jones, Doctor Strange, Cloak and Dagger, Bob, Agent of Hydra, Black Bolt from the Inhuman set, Beast, Illuminati, Adam Warlock, all getting six votes, and we had some others getting five votes and fewer. But the third place runners-up were Wolverine from the core set, Scarlet Witch, Gambit, and Ant-Man, which is one hero too many. So I had my subscribers in our private chat on Discord do a second, smaller poll to see 
which of these four they wanted the most, and the one of these four that got the least amount of votes was Ant-Man. These three got more votes, so that means our setup is going to be all five of these heroes. Hulkbuster, Iron Man, Iron Man, Wolverine, Scarlet Witch, and Gambit will be our heroes today, so let's go ahead and place them in the HQ for now. Couple interesting things here, we have some of each color, but Wolverine is only instinct, so if Dark Phoenix takes out Wolverine, all the Wolverines are gone. We've got some tech to work with, some covert with Scarlet Witch and Gambit. It's going to be interesting. Well, this is what you picked. Also, the votes are completely anonymous, so if you like, please let me know in the comments if anything that you picked got into this setup, so I can thank you very much for how difficult this is going to be. All right, let's take a closer look at the mastermind and scheme real quick. Dark Phoenix almost needs no introduction, but here it is. Always leads the Hellfire Club, not happening in this game. You guys have picked the villain groups. And now for her infamous Master Strike effect, KO the top card of the hero deck, and each card in the hero deck that shares a color with it, shuffle the hero deck. Dark Phoenix wins when the hero deck is empty, which will happen after five scheme twists, no matter what. So I gotta be real careful at how I am recruiting things. And she's got 13 attack, which is not easy to hit. And if that wasn't bad enough, you have Nuclear Armageddon as a scheme. Honestly, what should I expect when I put a public poll up online? So, we got five twists in the deck. The twist effect is destroy the city space closest to the mastermind. Any villain there escapes, put this twist there, and evil wins when the city is destroyed. Now, believe it or not, there is an upside here to having this mastermind scheme combo. One part of that upside is they don't directly interact with each other. She affects the hero deck and Nuclear Armageddon affects the city. Now they do overlap when it comes to things escaping and KOing stuff from the HQ, but they don't really stack in their effects. Another thing is there are only five twists and five master strikes in the entire villain deck that makes it less likely that either one's gonna show up. So there's a little bit of an advantage there. I use the term advantage very loosely, by the way. There's one other interesting combination that I can see right here. It has to do with the poisons and the scheme. So a lot of the poisons, they say they symbiote bond with a villain in a certain city space. However, if based on nuclear Armageddon, if that city space is destroyed, that means there can't be a villain there and these poisons will be easy to defeat. So I'm actually hoping a few city spaces are destroyed, then poisons show up, they'll be easy to fight because they can't bond with anything, and then I can gain them from there. But of course, that all depends on what I draw and when I draw it. So let's finish these decks. We have to get our five Master Strikes and our five Scheme Twists. We finish off here with two Bystanders in the Villain deck. Face down so we don't know what they are, of course. And that is everything. So let's go ahead and get everything shuffled and get this thing started. All right, everything shuffled. Let's see who we're starting with here in the HQ. We've got, all right, Wolverine, two Wolverines. Oh, three Wolverines, four Wolverines. Wow, all five Wolverines. That is pretty lucky because they could be the first to be KO'd from the hero deck. So I guess I know what I'm going for, at least on one side. And let's get started. All right, we're starting off with a rare three and three hand. That could be pretty good, but we're also gonna start with a Universal Church of Truth henchman. They are, I think, the newest henchman to the game. They have an ambush effect. Each henchman villain in the city gains a shard. If Magus is the mastermind, one cosmic wraith also gains a shard. Magus is not a mastermind. There are no cosmic wraiths, so just the henchman will gain a shard. So this one will gain a shard. And then they do have a fight effect. Fight, burn two shards, KO one of your heroes, which can be useful if used strategically, especially with a Wolverine deck. So let's see if I can do that. Okay, it's entered the city, but it's gonna need a shard. And now we can keep going. All right, so let's just play everything we have, which should give us three attack and three recruit. Uh-oh, my shard treasure chest is poking in here. Get out of here. Well, with three attack, we can go ahead and fight it. So let's do so. First thing we do is we gain the shard, and we just looked at it. It has no other fight effects. We can't burn two shards, so it is gone. Now, unfortunately, I didn't get any of the first common Wolverine, but I did get the three cost healing factor. Not as useful in this game as it could be because there aren't that many opportunities to get wounds. However, two attack is two attack, and it is a instinct card, so it'll help me draw cards when I play things like Frenzied Slashing. So let's go ahead and take this. Well, I still can, of course, before all the Wolverines are KO'd from the deck. Oh, and there's our first Iron Man after five Wolverine appearances. I think I know now what direction I'm going with the right-hand side of the game. A much more standard hand here. Let's see what we get for the second villain deck card of the game, and it's another henchman. I'm glad I took out that first one because now this is the only one that gets a shard. Unfortunately, I can't fight it this turn with only two attack, but we can start recruiting things. Four is more than enough to get endless invention, but there's a problem here. If I end up KOing all the tech cards from the deck, that means this will do pretty close to nothing, except it'll let me draw a card, which is something. So in order to hopefully get some more and get a tech deck going, because if I can get tech 
and strength and I can transform that Hulkbuster, I think I have a shot. So let me take this. Of course, we have the Gambit and Scarlet Witch cards to worry about. Oh, and there is one of them. Just taking a quick look, Ultra Reality has two recruit, lets us reveal the top card of our deck, discard it, or put it back. This can go really well with Gambit. So maybe on the right hand side, if I'm going Wolverine on the left, I have to have pretty much only Wolverine or some of Gambit's instant cards, but we'll take a look at this later. Dark Memories actually might be a pretty good strategy that would allow me to recruit all five classes without having to worry too much about when they get KO'd except for a couple of Coverts so I can trigger the effect. Dark Memories mean you get one attack for each different class of card in your discard pile. So if let's say I have two Altered Realities, I could end up with 10 attack just from two Altered Realities if I literally play my cards right. We'll see if I can do that if that's the route I want to go. We've made it to round two and hopefully we can make it many more turns after that. There's War. What is he good for? About six attack, and with a fight effect, each other player reveals an instinct hero or gains a wound. If I fight him on the right hand side, with the left hand having Wolverine, hopefully that shouldn't be too much of a problem. He also has an escape effect, which means both players do that. Could be worse, but I still don't want him to escape. Some more good news for me though, I've got five recruit, which does mean I can get one of the best Wolverine cards here, Frenzied Slashing. This will give me two attack and let me draw two cards if an instinct card is played, something that will probably almost always happen if I make this a Wolverine instinct deck. So let's not wait any longer, let's recruit him. I did not mention this before, but since Berserker Rage is here in the HQ, that means that Dark Phoenix cannot KO it from the hero deck, which means it's safe until I'm able to recruit it. So hopefully I can do that sooner than later, but it is here waiting for me when I can. Now let's see what we're replacing Wolverine with over here. And oh, we've got a Covert Gambit, so these will work very well together, check out why. Stack the deck reads, draw two cards, then put a card from your hand on top of your deck. And Alter Reality says, reveal the top card of your deck, discard it, or put it back. So using these two cards as a combo, I could end up drawing two cards, discarding one that has a certain class, and then using Alter Reality to discard it and make Dark Memories more powerful, all the while triggering Dark Memories because this is a Covert card as well. So if I can get both of these, maybe on the right-hand side, that would be a decent strategy as well, and wouldn't make that tech card go to waste because it would help with one of the classes needed for Dark Memories. I think I might have to do that. But we're going to have to wait until the right hand's turn to do that, which is going to be right now. And the next card from the villain deck is... Famine. I'm glad to be avoiding these Master Strikes and Scheme Twists, but I am going to have to take care of these guys. Fight effect. Each other player reveals an instinct hero or discards a card. Again, a good side for this side to fight, while this side has an instinct card. So hopefully I can get some attack over here so I can do that before we start having some pretty bad escapes. Now without a shard of our own here, I can't fight anything in the city, so let's play our shield agents. Okay, so what I said before, I'd like to start getting these Covert cards and maybe go for a Dark Memories deck, which, if I can get both of these cards here, I can trigger it even if no other Covert cards come up, hopefully. But uh, let's get started by taking the one with Recruit. We're going to start with Alter Reality, which should allow me to get some more cards, like Pound for Pound. Pound for Pound says draw a card, and if you play a tech card, you get two attack. This might happen on the right, but mostly this would function as a Strength card for Dark Memories. Let's keep this going, I'm doing pretty well so far. We're doing so well, please don't screw it up with the Master Strike yet. Oh, I had to say something. Sometimes I just don't know when to shut up. Okay, so, Master Strike, KO the top card of the hero deck, and each card in the hero deck that shares a color with it, shuffle the hero deck. So let's see, what color do I hope it is? I actually, I wanna say blue ranged because I don't need that for any of the effects I'm doing, except for Dark Memories. Dark Memories won't work unless I'm able to do that. I don't really have enough of the draw card Wolverines to make it work, so I want more instinct. Maybe I have one tech, maybe tech, really nothing, but uh, I'm going to have to KO something. So this is going to be a... Alright, it's a strength card. That means that transforming that Hulkbuster is almost going to be impossible. I will end up with two strength cards in my deck. At least I have two, but what else gets KO'd from the hero deck? Let's find out. I'm going to put it right over here. So we ended up with four pound for pound cards. So yeah, we only have the one left here. This is the last one. All four of these are getting KO'd. The good news is only four cards get KO'd from the hero deck this turn. The smallest amount possible, but... That is my only strength card. I'm going to have to take that over here on the right side and not KO it due to an escape to make sure that Dark Memories works. So these are all gone. It'll be a much bigger KO next time Dark Phoenix decides to use a Master Strike. Let's get these shuffled up and put back on the Hero Deck spot. All right, now that that's out of the way, and hopefully we don't have to deal with that for a while, let's play Healing Factor. 
Again, this lets me KO a wound from my hand or discard pile and lets me draw a card, but as you can see, I have no wounds in my hand and I have no discard pile, so it's just functioning as a two attack. But plus one attack here and I have three. We add this Shield Trooper's attack. We end up with three. Now I do have this shard. I could spend it to fight Famine this turn, but that would make me have to check this side for an Instinct Hero or discard a card. I can check to see if there are any cards here I don't mind discarding, so it looks like I have three agents. Three agents, one trooper, uh, maybe the agent, but if I draw a card with this, I could end up with more attacks, so I really don't know if that's going to help me. Yeah, you know what? On second look, I only have the one attack. This card draw, I think I only have other gray cards, so the most attack I could get is two, so I'm not going to be fighting... Oh, um, hmm. Nope, I'm not going to be fighting anything else this turn. So, discarding the trooper is not the worst thing in the world, and it might be nice to get these horsemen out of the city. Also, with the Church of Truth, I can't farm this for shards because no matter how many shards are on it, when I fight it, I only gain one of them. The rest go back to the supply. So, you know what? I'm changing my mind. I'll hold on to my shard. I'm going to use this for a burn two shards KO if I can later. That's too valuable. And uh, let's fight the Church of Truth. So, we'll gain the shard here. And, oh, I can actually burn two shards now. Now, let's see. Fight burn two shards. KO one of your heroes. Now, the instinct is to KO one of these shield agents, but I want Berserker Rage. And I only have eight shield agents in my deck right now. But it's going to be impossible to get Berserker Rage unless I start getting some Recruit Power. You know what, I think I'm going to KO the Shield Trooper and here's why. I do need the attack to fight things in the city, however, I want to recruit as many of these Wolverines as I can, keep the hero deck moving, keep Wolverines coming out, because as soon as Dark Phoenix decides to KO Instinct, that is every single Wolverine card, he is only Instinct. So, I have to keep that moving quickly, and then I can just use Wolverine's attack to fight instead of the Trooper. So let's do that, let's burn these two shards, and we'll KO our Shield Trooper here. And thank you, henchmen. Speaking of Wolverine, let's go ahead and recruit one more. I'll probably get a Shield Officer later so I can afford Berserker Rage, but this is not going anywhere, so we have the time. Let's take one of these healing factors. And what are we going to get here? Okay, it is a, uh, a Toon Tectonic Transducer. I'm honestly glad another tech card showed up. If I outwit, which means you have three different costs of cards, you get to smash two, which means discard one of your cards from your hand and you get two more attack. This will help with my Dark Memories plan, as well as transforming that Hulkbuster card if I get it, so I have to get this on my next turn. Speaking of my next turn, that'll happen right now. Some decent recruit power here, but let's see what other kind of power we have. It is Death, the strongest of the Four Horsemen cards. I feel like I've said that before. Each other player reveals their hand and KOs one of their heroes that cost one or more. So no matter what I do, whether Death escapes or I fight him, I'm going to have to KO a non-gray card. So when I fight him is kind of important. Oh, I said non-gray, but I guess I could KO a sidekick or a shield officer this way. Regardless, I'll have to do this strategically. If I can, that is, otherwise he'll escape, and then both sides have to do that, whether I'm ready or not. So here's what I can do this turn. Endless Invention is going to let me draw a card. Alter Reality lets me reveal the top card of my deck, discard it, or put it back. So, since I have no Covert Prerequisite here, if I play Alter Reality first, it might help me draw the card I want. So let's do that. We'll get our two recruit here. And now the top card of the deck is a Shield Trooper. So let's say I don't discard this. That means I'll draw it and I'll end up with two attack. But two attack is not enough to fight anything here. So I'm hoping for a Shield Agent instead. So let's go ahead and discard this. And that's all for our Alter Reality. And now we can play Endless Invention, which gives us a better chance of getting a Shield Agent. And we did gain one. Perfect. So after we play our Agents, we end up with six recruit, which is just enough to get both of these cards, or this one and pound for pound. They're not going anywhere from here, but uh, stack the deck's gonna be the most useful right now because I need to trigger alter reality, so let's take that first. And to replace it, we are going to get, oh, there's Scarlet Witch's rare. Again, we're lucky that we pulled the rare, hopefully with enough time to recruit it before the HQ is all gone. Here's what her card says. Reveal the top three cards of the hero deck, put one of them in your hand, put the rest back on the top or bottom of the hero deck in any order. That is probably one of the best effects I could possibly get to counter Dark Phoenix because I could strategically place the cards on top of the hero deck so the next Master Strike would KO the cards I want. Plus I get free recruits out of it. And I can trigger Dark Memories with three Avengers cards and I have Hulkbuster Iron Man and Scarlet Witch to trigger those. Plus, with Gambit stacking the deck, that can make this even easier, so I really, really want to end up recruiting this. But we do have four recruit left. I'm going to have to go with Tectonic Transducer. I am going to probably try to get some Shield Officers over here so I can recruit these rares on both sides, but let's take this for now. 
I'm getting cautiously optimistic with the cards I have available. Oh, and there's Chaos Magic. More hero deck manipulation. Reveal the top card of the hero deck. You may play a copy of that card this turn. When you do, put that card on the bottom of the hero deck. Also pretty good for making sure that Dark Phoenix can't do what she wants to do. If only I could take a card I have and put it in the hero deck, then I could make the game last a little longer, but that is not the way this works. Okay, I think things are looking a little up. Let's keep going. Well, we have enough here to fight a henchman. Let's see if that's what we get. And it is what we get. They enter the city, but they need their shard. And luckily we can fight them again and keep trying to burn some shards. So let's play both of the attack cards we have. Frenzied Slashing here gives me nothing else until I play an instinct first. So we're gonna have to wait for that. But I do have four recruit and that's gonna be enough to take healing factor. So let's first take healing factor and see what we replace it with. Again, healing factor won't be of much use until we're able to get some wounds to KO. And there is our first blue card, our Hex Bolt from Scarlet Witch. I think blue is going to be the least useful color in this game. It says discard the top card of any player's deck. You may play a copy of that card this turn. I definitely want a blue card here for Dark Memory, so it's good to have at least one, and this might be the one I get. Now with three attack, I don't see anything stopping us from fighting this other Universal Church of Truth. So let's uh, take the shard and fight the henchmen. I'm lucky they didn't all show up at once, otherwise they would have made each other much, much stronger. So that pacing worked out pretty well for me. And let's move on. Awesome, a chance to get this Chaos Magic here with four Recruit. What else do we have to deal with? And we have, uh-oh, the Symbiotic Armor. I was hoping this wouldn't come up, especially not with Dark Phoenix. So, Ambush. This Symbiote bonds with the Mastermind. That means it and the Mastermind get joined together and you add their attack and their effects together. When you fight the Mastermind, defeat Symbiotic Armor and KO one of your heroes instead of taking a tactic. So this is going to go under Dark Phoenix's stack here. And now she is not only one stronger, she's a 14 attack, but once I fight her, I don't get to take a tactic. Instead, I defeat the symbiotic armor. So now I have to hit her six times, which is honestly five more times than I needed to do it. But now that's what it is. Nothing to fight for two attacks. Let's play our recruit. Now I'm pretty sure I want to take chaos magic in order to start doing some dark memories. However, this could end up playing a card from the hero deck that has a lot of recruit, could end up helping me get warp time and space. And again, these are going to be here no matter what. So while I have the four and I can afford it, let's go ahead and take Chaos Magic. And we might be able to do some cool stuff with Dark Memories. All right, there's another Alter Reality, so I definitely want to get that card. Just need a little more Recruit and I can warp some time and space, but let's see what Wolverine's up to. Okay, I have enough attack to fight one of the Horsemen. I'm feeling pretty good about this, but I can't forget that with this Master Strike effect and this Scheme Twist effect, the game could end very quickly with just five or four turns. So got to be able to... Uh, Make sure I'm keeping track of that. All right, our first bystander, and uh, unfortunately for him, death is going to capture him. If I rescue him, I gain a sidekick, so I have that to look forward to. Let's play our attack again. I'm not going to be able to KO any wounds, so this is just going to give me four attack. So with this, I can fight Famine. However, if I do so, the right side is going to have to discard a card because there are no instinct cards over here, which, by the way, is a problem for Dark Memory. So hopefully I can afford to give one Wolverine over here to the right side. But let's see what we have here. We've got, okay, stack the deck. We've got one, two, three, four shield agents. So we'll have four recruit power. Uh, okay, so if I want to take Alter Reality, I don't need all four of these shield agents next turn. And uh, I don't think I'm going to end up with seven recruit. So let's go ahead and discard this and fight Famine. Clearing up the city a little is never a bad idea. Okay, with three shield agents, I think it is time now to get ourselves a shield officer in hopes that we can recruit Berserker Rage sooner than later. So what are we going to get? We've got, all right, Maria Hill. Off the top of my head, I don't think there are any, oh, actually, Agent May is an instinct shield officer, so hopefully she'll come up. That'll help me real big over here. Let's see what Gambit's got up his sleeve on the right-hand side. Okay, let's take care of business before we get to do some fun stuff. And there's another Church of Truth. They're gonna enter the city with one shard on them. I said with one shard on them. Thank you. All right, uh, let's check out Stack the Deck. Draw two cards and put a card from your hand on top of your deck. Let's do that. The two cards I draw are a trooper and an agent. All right, so let's do some math here. If I were to keep the trooper, I could play a tune Technotic Transducer. I do outwit, so I would get four attack here and the shield trooper would give me a fifth attack. Unfortunately, five attack doesn't do enough to fight either of these. So all I need to fight something this turn is three. So I don't really need the shield trooper. However, I do need the Shield Trooper in case I want to play this without discarding a card for Smash. This will give me four Recruit, but I think I want to take Alter Reality, which will leave me with one Recruit left, which I can't do anything with. So, 
let's put this shield agent on the top of my deck and let's move on from there. Okay, this says outwit smash two. Um, I do outwit, but I'm not going to do smash. I'm just gonna get the two attack. I could have smashed this shield trooper for a total of four attack, but I didn't need it. I just need the three. So let's play this trooper. Now I'd wanna fight this with the left hand side. The problem is the city is going to start to fill up and then the nuclear Armageddon is going to start destroying the bridge first, then the streets and the rooftops. So I really want to have as few villains here as possible. So let's keep the city clear. Let's fight the Church of Truth. We'll gain the shard here on the right. And the henchman is gone. And we have three recruit left here. And let's take Alter Reality, more recruit power. Let's take a look at it again, just in case. Two recruit, reveal the top part of your deck, discard it or put it back. So I have two of these now, plus that covert gambit, a higher chance of triggering dark memories. So let's recruit her. Again, if I can get warp time and space, that will be a very, very big help. And there is Build the Suit. This is the one that not only gives me a lot of recruit power, but if I play a tech and strength card, I can transform this into ultra massive armor, giving me a lot of attack power. I really hope I can do that. It's not going to be easy, but Gambit will help. And Scarlet Witch will help for that matter. But we're going to have to wait a little bit until we can see if we can transform that. All right, some decent attack power here, but I think I'm still one short to fighting war here. Uh, we have, oh, another henchman. I'm glad we're drawing these now, but it kind of makes me nervous that uh, they're all coming out now. Where are the poisons and where are the scheme twists? Also, where's the shard for this guy? Okay, once again, no wounds to KO, so we're gonna play two, four, five attack right now. Now my no shards are a valuable resource in this game because the only way I can get them is the Church of Truth. However, war being in the streets is a bigger threat because if he escapes, each player gains wounds. Actually, gaining wounds isn't so bad. If he escapes, then both players gain them. Maybe I don't care if he escapes. I'll end up KOing some heroes here, but it's not a huge deal. And he's not in the bridge yet. Okay, you know what? I am going to fight the Church of Truth and gain that shard and uh, burn two to KO something. I think, hmm, I still want the recruit for Berserker Rage. Yeah, you know what? Check out War. Each other player reveals an instinct hero or gains a wound. So if I fight him now, the right side is just going to gain a wound, slowing the progress. So I don't think I want to fight him right now. Either I fight him with the right side or probably not at all. You know what, I'm gonna do what I did last time. I'm gonna fight the Church of Truth, gain the shard, burn two shards, and get rid of my shield trooper so I have a better chance of doing Berserker Rage, I think. Yeah, I think we're gonna go with that. So we'll fight the Church of Truth for three. We'll take its shard. The henchman is gone. And I will burn these two shards to get rid of my shield trooper. Really hope I'm making the right choice here. At the end of the game, recruit power is gonna be almost useless because I won't have a hero deck that has many cards in it, but I wanna keep recruiting things while I can. Speaking of which, let's play all three of these, and let's take a shield officer. I'm really hoping for Agent May. Not Agent May, but I will take it. As soon as we get Berserker Rage, I can start KOing shield agents, I promise. All right, I think we can do some dark memories this turn because of the two covert cards, but let's see what we have to deal with first. And, oh, speaking of chaos magic, here's Poison Scarlet Witch. It's kind of perfect that she appeared here. All right, so we have a three attack villain, and if you fight it, the symbiote bonds with another villain in the city with an odd-numbered attack. In this case, that would be death, which would be a 10-attack villain, which would not be great. If already bonded or unable to bond, gain this as a hero instead. And then if you gain it as a hero, the effect is 2-attack, uh, and then reveal the top card of your deck. If it has an odd number, cost, draw it, and the bottom says 0 is even. This would be a great card to have, but I cannot fight it unless I take out death first. So let me see if there's some way I can do that. So in order to trigger dark memories here, I'm going to have to play Chaos Magic first. So let's do that and see which at the top of the hero deck. Reveal the top card of the hero deck. You may play a copy of that card this turn when you do put that card on the bottom of the hero deck. All right, the top card of the hero deck is... Okay, it's Healing Factor Wolverine. I can KO a card from my hand or discard pile and draw a card, and I get two attacks. So do I want to play a copy of that this turn? Well, I have no wounds to KO but I'll get two attack. Let me see how much attack I can get otherwise. So that's two. This is the th third attack. And then, oh, dark memories. How many attack will that give me? Here's my discard pile. It has, okay, a tech and a covert and another covert. All right, so dark memories is gonna give me just two attack, unless, unless I can spend this to recruit either pound for pound or hex vault, then I'll get three attacks. So three, four, uh, five, six, and then, oh, the shard will make seven. So I can fight death this turn. So let's play that out. Okay, so we have to play our two shield agents first. That'll bring me up to two recruit, which will let me... Uh, pound for pound lets you draw a card. Hex Bolt doesn't really do anything without another blue card, so I think pound for pound is better here. Uh, and if I play a tech card, I get two attack. Let's take pound for pound. 
cool, so now my Dark Memories would give me three attack, but we have to decide whether or not to play Healing Factor before it enters the HQ. Let's play it so it goes to the bottom of the hero deck, and I'm going to gain two attack from that. Oh, and then we have to refill the HQ with the new card on top, and that is Hexbolt. Oh, a second Hexbolt. Probably wouldn't have wanted to play a copy of that, but uh, we'll see what happens here. Okay, we're going to alter reality. Let me move this over for some room uh, to recruit, and oh, let's gain that first. Oh, wait a second. I have two more recruit now. So you know what? Let me recruit Hexbolt as well, which will make Dark Memories even stronger. So, oh, actually, you know what? I can't do that because I have to play this entire card first before I get to use the recruit points for anything. So uh, I won't be able to do that. It was a nice try on my part, though. All right, so I got the two recruit. Reveal the top card of your deck. Discard it or put it back the top card of my deck. And this will help with Endless Invention is a Shield Agent. Uh, would one more recruit help me? That would give me a total of three. Not really, so let's discard it. And then I get Dark Memories thanks to Chaos Magic. So again, with pound for pound in the discard, that's gonna give me plus one for green, plus two for black, plus three for red. So I get three more attack. Let's max out our attack here. Let's play our Shield Trooper for a six. Now before we attack, we have one card left. Endless Invention lets us draw a card. If I get to draw a Trooper here, I won't have to spend my precious shard to fight death. But let's see what it is. It is a trooper. That is exactly what I wanted. So with seven attack, we can fight death, but there is a side effect here. I think this is probably one of the most unfortunate fight effects in the game. Each other player reveals their hand and KOs one of the heroes that cost one or more. Let me see what I have over here. I see a Marie Hill on the top, and I see Frenzy. This is a very valuable card, so I think I'm going to have to KO this Maria Hill when I fight death. I think it's kind of worth it. I don't have to KO any Wolverines this way, uh, plus death is gone. So let's first KO Maria Hill here. She just got here. I feel bad about that. But death is gone, which means that Scarlet Witch is free to fight without symbiote bonding, at least uh, for now. And we have a bystander to rescue. When you rescue this bystander, gain a sidekick. Awesome. Let's do it. And the top card of the sidekick deck is awesome. It's a blue card. It's Lockheed. Might keep Lockheed around for a while. And speaking of blue cards, let's power up Dark Memories by taking one of the Hex Bolts. Okay, I'd love to get more Frenzied Slashings out here before they are all gone. So, we're, oh, Keen Sentence is good too for the left-hand side. It is the weakest Wolverine card on its own, but it does let me draw a card with Instinct, which should be easy to come by on the left-hand side. So we're going to go ahead and take this next turn. Okay, I think I'm doing a good job managing this city. I'm hoping that I can start getting, if I draw both Alter Realities again, that could be a max of 10 attack with just two cards. So we'll see if I can hit Dark Phoenix soon. I gotta get rid of this uh, poison armor here. We've got a smaller hand here, thanks to that KO of Maria Hill, but maybe we can be okay if a henchman pops up. Oh no, I was getting complacent. I forgot about the scheme twist and it showed up when I least expected it. So twist, destroy the city space closest to the mastermind. Any villain there escapes, put this twist there. Reminder that evil wins when the city is destroyed. That means when five scheme twists are pulled, everything is gone. So the bridge has been exploded. At least we didn't have anybody there. But uh, the next thing to go is the street, so I better get war out of there while I still can. Now, three attack potential here. I can potentially fight Poison Scarlet Witch. However, I'd want her on the right-hand side instead. Let me take one more look. I feel the top card of your deck if it has an odd-numbered cost to draw it. Yeah, this is going to be a lot better for the right-hand side. So I'm going to leave her where she is, and hopefully uh, not too much will happen. I can probably fight her next turn. So we'll just play a recruit this turn. Now, I have a decision to make. Do I want to take Keen Senses for two? or spend three recruit to get another shield officer to replace the one that got KO. Wolverine has no recruit card, so I'm gonna need that shield officer if I want to get Berserker Rage. You know what, I wanna get this sooner than later, so I am gonna take a shield officer. Maybe a turn when we only have two recruit, I can take Keen Senses. Uh, it's not going anywhere. Hopefully Instinct does not get KO'd, but uh, I think this is the right call. And again, another chance at Agent May, and it's not, but I will take it. And we have to move on from there. Okay, so we can earn enough attack power to fight Poison Scarlet Witch as long as a villain with an odd-numbered attack does not show up. Oh, that's exactly what I didn't want. I gotta stop phrasing things like that. It doesn't work out in my favor. Again, death. Seven attack, fight effect. Each other player reveals their hand and KOs one of the heroes that costs one or more. So I almost got a chance to fight this, but I, I lost it. Now I gotta fight this death or else she's gonna symbiote bond with him. So what's the most attack I can get this turn? Okay, if I outwitted, I would get Smash 2. Unfortunately, to outwit, you need three different costs of cards, and I have four here, and I have zero here, so I do not outwit. If I did, I would have been able to fight War. That's too bad. So that'll give me two attack. This will give me two more attack. Uh, nothing to fight but Scarlet Witch, who's only going to bond with death, so I don't even want to fight her this turn. 
This will give me one extra attack, but that's still not enough. So I'm not going to fight anything, so let's just play our shield agents. Now, there's some good stuff here I really want to recruit. Build the suit will give me three recruit when I use it. And then, uh, of course, warp time and space. So I could take Hexbolt, but I think right now I'm going to do what I did on the left and take a shield officer to hopefully get some more recruit power later on. And who knows, maybe I'll get a special one. So this one is going to be a standard one. I don't want to go overboard on these, but uh, it's nice to have some. And this turn is over. Not quite enough of either attack or recruit for my taste, but we'll see what we can do with it. Oh, there's Poison Sabertooth. This would be a great card to have on the left. Look at the top card of your deck. You may KO it. That's its hero effect. That would be fantastic. Its fight effect is this symbiote bonds with a villain in the streets. If already bonded or unable to bond, Gain this as a hero instead. Unfortunately, war is in the streets. Now, if there's a scheme twist and the streets are destroyed, I can fight Poison Sabretooth without any worry. However, that's not the case. At least not for one more scheme twist. So what can I fight this turn? Healing Factor once again. K.O. a wound from your hand or discard pile if you want. And I don't think I gain any wounds, but I'm just going to check. No, I don't have any wounds here at all. If only I did, I'd be able to do this, but I can't. So let's just play both Healing Factors and the Shield Trooper for 5 attack. All right, with five attack, here are my options. I have no shards. I can't fight war. I could fight Poison Scarlet Witch. She's going to bond with death and make a 10 attack super villain that I don't really want to fight. I can't fight death. And if I fight Poison Sabretooth, he's going to jump all the way over here and symbiote bond with war, who's probably going to escape. So I'm kind of out of options. My right hand side, what do I have over here next turn? So I've got draw a card. I have Hex Bolt, Ultra Reality. I have decent recruit power, not a lot of attack power. I only have one guaranteed attack, and then if I draw a card, I can get more. So that is not a good sign. And here's War's Escape Effect. Each player reveals an instinct hero or gains a wound. So probably the only side that'll gain a wound is the right side. Again, not a huge deal. I prefer the wound on the left because that means I could use it to draw a card with Healing Factor. But other than that, I don't care about the escape besides the, of course, KO from something from the HQ. So for all I know, the next card could be a Scheme Twist, which means War would escape anyway. Yeah, I think I'm not going to fight anything in this turn, which makes me nervous, but I think it's the right move. Let me play my uh, recruit cards. Let me now take keen senses and see what else comes up. Otherwise, I'll take a sidekick. And then what do we have? It's going to be, okay, uh, repulsor rays. Not super important because I don't have a lot of blue cards. I wouldn't mind KOing this if war escapes. So uh, not too mad about that. So let's get ourselves a sidekick. Maybe it'll be useful. I'm hoping for Zabu, the instinct sidekick, but it's a standard, which is also good. That may help me get that uh, Berserker Rage down the line, but uh, let's see what the damage is. All right, I just realized I have uh, four recruit here, two recruit here for six. I'm one recruit away from getting warp time and space. So if I can draw a card with pound for pound and it is a shield agent, I can recruit that, which I desperately want to do. I hope that's the case, but we have more pressing business to take care of right here. And uh oh, <laughs> this is not a great time for this, but I guess when is a good time. All right, Master Strike, KO the top card of the hero deck, and each card in the hero deck that shares a color with it, shuffle the hero deck. The top card of the hero deck is... I really hope it's not Instinct. I hope it's not Covert. It's Tech. Also not great, but at least I have one of these available. But there are a good amount of Tech cards in here. Let me see what they are. Okay, there are 15 Tech cards in the hero deck, mostly Iron Man. Actually, yeah, Iron Man and Hulkbuster Iron Man. That's too bad, but at least I got a few for Dark Memories. I think I'm going that route anyway. And the two classes I wanted not to get KO'd didn't get KO'd, but something had to go. So all 15 of these are gone. Putting the total number of cards in the hero deck down to only 33, so I have to be careful what I recruit and when I recruit it. I'm not giving up quite yet. There's still plenty of stuff I can do. Uh, let's start with pound for pound. Well, actually, I changed my mind. Let's actually start with Ultra Reality. Ultra Reality can actually help me try to get that last recruit I need for warp time and space. So we'll play it for two recruit. And here we go. I'm going to reveal the top card of my deck. It is Chaos Magic. Hmm. So should I discard it or put it back? Should I draw this? If I draw this, I'll play the top card of the hero deck. I could discard it instead and hope for a recruit card so I can get warp time and space. Uh, I can't trigger dark memories yet, but let me just see what's in my discard right here. Um, okay, you know what? I have a tech card here. So you know what? I think I do want to discard Chaos Magic because I really don't know what's coming up next. But I'd like the red card to be in the discard to give me more points for the next Dark Memory. So let's actually do that and discard it. And we'll try the next Alter Reality. Okay, this one gave me two recruit as well. I'm at a total of four. The top card of my deck, I hope it is a Shield Agent. It is not. 
but I have one more chance here. I'm going to discard it, which gives me a chance of drawing Recruit on the next one. But I do get Dark Memories here. Actually, well, no, I don't want to spend this to Recruit. I might need that. So as I looked at before, I have Attack and I have a Covert card. So I'm going to get two Attack for this Dark Memories. Okay, here's my last chance. Pound for Pound lets me draw a card. If this is a Shield Agent, then I can do the Recruit I want. And it is... Okay, not a shield agent, but I do get to draw a card. We're really dragging this out, aren't we? Also, I don't get the plus two attack because I played the green card first. Oh, well. Okay, one more chance here. Come on, shield agent. Here we go. Okay, not what I wanted, but maybe I can turn this into some attack. So, no warp time and space this turn for me, unfortunately. Oh, hey, I'm just realizing I could have done something the whole time. Actually, no, no, no. Lockheed opens up an opportunity. I couldn't have done this the whole time. You guys seeing what I'm talking about? Hexbolt says, discard the top card of any player's deck. You may play a copy of that card this turn. So I have another chance. If the top of this deck is a shield agent, then I can get the recruit I need. And in order to do that, I needed a blue card first, which I now have in Lockheed. So, all right, let's look at this hand here. There are one, two, three shield agents. That means there are five more here in the deck. There's a decent chance I could draw one. So let's do that. First, we have to play Lockheed. Lockheed's going to give us just two attack without playing Hexbolt first. And there it is. Now we can play Hexbolt. Okay, one more attack from this. And here's the moment of truth. The top card of the left-hand side is, come on, Shield Agent. Oh, even better, a Maria Hill. Great, all right, so I'm discarding it, and I may play a copy of it, which I will do right now. That gives me two recruit. All right, I'm glad that worked out. Now when I play my final two recruit, I actually have eight. Now Berserker Rage won't do me a huge amount of good here, but I will take warp time and space. Again, I get to get a hero for free, and I get to put cards in the bottom of the hero deck and I get to trigger dark memories look I have one two three four five Avengers cards that should happen more often than not which is great so I'll recruit this right now very glad I was able to pull that off what are we replacing it with oh and there's gambit's rare which is a great one for the left hand side it's an instinct card with four attack reveal the top card of your deck you get recruit equal to its cost and with these five cost wolverines there that can give me nine attack with just one card potentially but of course berserker rage is first priority all right what do I have I have five attack um, you know what? I think I'm going to take out War from the streets just to open it up to fighting Poison Sabretooth, especially if there's a Scheme Twist next turn. Well, the Scheme Twist would do that either way. All right, so with this Shard, we can get one more attack. So let's do that. Let's spend the Shard, gain the attack, and we can fight War. And again, the fight effect is each other player reveals an instinct hero or gains a wound, and the left side is going to have no problem with that. There's Wolverine right there, even though the wound would have actually been preferable, so I could trigger the healing factor. Doesn't matter, war is gone. And that means that I don't have to get a wound over here. All right, pretty good turn. I really want to see that uh, Scarlet Witch warp time and space come back up. So I got to keep things moving if I want that to happen. Okay, I have some draw power this turn. Maybe I can get enough of these shield officers to get Berserker Rage, although I did discard one that was kind of unfortunate for that recruit purpose. If we don't let Poison Sabretooth move forward, I can fight him this turn and gain him. So let's see what this is. Oh, oh no, okay. As soon as he was gone, he's back. So war enters the city, messing up my plans once again. However, I have to remember, if I can take out death, then the right-hand side can safely fight Scarlet Witch and gain her right away. She won't bond with any of these because they have even attack costs. And I've got five attack right here. Let's see how much more I can get. Healing factor again. I have no wounds, so it's just going to give me two attack. And this will make all the difference, hopefully. So frenzied slashing, two attack for this. And let's draw two cards. I just need two more attack to hit death. Here's the first one. All right, that's useful. And another attack. Great. This might do it. I say might because sidekicks are never a sure thing, but let's play it. So we get to draw two cards. I just need one more attack. Okay, that's not an attack. That's not an attack. Oh, that's too bad. All right, so we're in that position where we don't have enough attack and we don't have enough recruit for getting Berserker Rage. That is unfortunate. Well, let's play what we can. Two more shield troopers gives me six attack and five shield agents give me five recruit. Okay. Okay. I don't want to take anything else from the city, but I could fight war. Hold on, I have another idea. If I let Poison Sabretooth bond with Scarlet Witch, then Poison Scarlet Witch can't bond with anybody else. If she's already bonded, then you gain one of them, and that would only make an attack of seven just like death. How much is the right going to get? The right side has one attack, two attack, oh, just two, and then stack the deck. Probably not going to be able to fight him next turn. But what happens if I fight war? So if I fight war, the right side will gain a wound. So here's what I'm thinking. I should probably let the poisons fight each other. Although, wait, that'll mean death will be faster to escape, and I don't want that either. Oh, this is tough. Actually, he'll escape sooner no matter what. So if I fight one, it'll bond with the other, but then if I draw a scheme twist, they're both gone. 
And that could very much happen. I only have one Scheme Twist played. Okay, I think I am going to fight more. The right side is going to gain a wound. I'll have to work around that, but I don't want that to escape just because a villain comes in. If I have to, I can fight uh, Scarlet Witch for three my next turn, maybe with Stack the Deck and Bond her then, but I don't want to do that yet. Oh, especially if I fight her, she's going to Bond with Death. And if I have a Master Strike, then I can fight Sabretooth when the streets are destroyed. I got, can't forget that. Okay, let's fight War. We're going to gain a wound on the right, but if I'm lucky, I'll get that Grievous Wound, which will let me pass to the left-hand side, but that's very unlikely to happen. We'll see what happens, though. All right, each, player reveal, each other player reveals an Instinct Hero or gains a wound. As I showed you, there are no Instinct Heroes over here, so the left side is going to give a wound to the right side. At least that's how I'm interpreting it. And the wound is... Oh, it's a standard wound. Okay, we'll have to take it. But at least War is gone. And now with five Recruit, again, I want that Berserker Raid, so I think I'm going to end up taking the Shield Officer again, hoping for Agent May. And the Shield Officer is a standard Shield Officer. But at the same time, I've got two Recruit left, so let's go ahead and take a Sidekick. Who are we going to get this time? Oh, it's a standard Sidekick. If those two working together don't give me the Recruit I need for both Berserker Rage and High Stakes Jackpot, I don't know what will. Okay, please, no Scheme Twist here. Oh, that's a joke. All right, we're only two Master Strikes away from losing the whole game. We got to KO the top card of the hero deck, and that card is going to be... Okay, it's an instinct card, but I have the two rare instincts out here. Still not great. Let's see how many we get rid of. That is the rest of Wolverine's cards. All right, that's 11 cards. That's all the rest of Wolverine and some of Gambit. We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. All KO'd. Bringing the hero deck down to a mere 21 cards and two classes. We've got blue and red left. I wish blue went earlier, but uh, that wasn't the case. Maybe I can chain some hex bolts together on the right-hand side, but otherwise there's not much to help me on the left-hand side. Left the hand's not gonna recruit anything else but uh, these two and try to KO some stuff. And if I can get that poison saber tooth, which because I have an empty sewer space, there's a chance. All right, let's see if Gambit can stack the deck in my favor. Draw two cards and put a card from your hand on top of your deck. I'm going to draw two cards. I drew an agent and a trooper. So which one do I want to put back? Um, with three attack, if I fight, again, Scarlet Witch, she's going to bond with death, which I don't want to happen. So I may not fight anything this turn, but with four recruit, that's still not enough to get build the suit. So not a great hand any way you slice it. Let's put the shield trooper on top, and then we're going to end up probably recruiting repulsor rays. Yeah, I could take a shield officer to get build the suit, but uh, there's not that many more rares for me over here. Actually, there's no more rares for me at all because there aren't any blue rares in this game. So uh, let me go ahead and play all my recruit and we'll take repulsor rays while we can. And what's the best I can hope for? More, uh, more covert Scarlet Witches, maybe? Oh, exactly the same. I think we're gonna end up getting a lot of that. Okay, some potential here, definitely stuff to work with. And there's another henchman. They need to get their shard, and let me figure out who and what I'm fighting. Unfortunately, Healing Factor cannot KO the wound on the other side, so let's play both Healing Factors for four attack, and hopefully Keen Senses can give us something good. One more attack for me, and I do get to draw a card. I just need some more attack to fight Death, and then I can fight Scarlet Witch with the other side. Let's see, what do we get? Oh, it's just a shield agent. Oh, that's too bad. Not enough attack to do what I want, not enough recruit to do what I want. But uh, I can fight the Church of Truth just to keep that going, so let's spend three of our attack to fight it. Which will give me their shard and send them packing. What am I going to do with five recruit? I don't want anything to clutter up this deck, however... Okay, how many shield officers do I have? I have one out here, and in my discard I have... Let's see. I have a sidekick and I have two, so two, four, six. Uh, all I got to do is draw the three of them. I don't think I want any more of those, so let's get a sidekick this time. Top sidekick is... Oh, cool. Instinct sidekick Zabu. Let's take him. Best sidekick for Wolverine. It'll help KO things, and it will provide an instinct trigger for his superpower. Now, should I take a shield officer or not? I wish I could look at it beforehand, but I can't. If I can get Poison Sabretooth, I can start KOing a lot of them. Don't have a lot of time left. There aren't that many cards left to play from the villain deck. Actually, let's count them right now. We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 18. So roughly 9 rounds left, but could be a lot fewer of those if the city fills up with Scheme Twist or two more Master Strikes are played. Okay, I'm gonna play, I'm gonna get one more Shield Officer. Last one, I promise. And the last Shield Officer is... Okay, no Agent May for me, but I'll take it. I just really want to take Berserker Rage. Alright, let's move on before I freak out. 
Okay, we may have some power here. Let's see if we can use it. And, okay, good. It's a henchman. Still, they gain a shard. And maybe we can fight death here. Uh, okay, I think we're going to... Okay, I have Alter Reality, which has dark memories. What does my discard pile look like? I've got how many colors? I have red, blue. So I have two colors here. So I think what I do want to do is play Chaos Magic first. Okay, reveal the top card of the hero deck. The top card of the hero deck is a Hexbolt Scarlet Witch. One attack and a blue superpower. I can play a copy of it this turn when I do put it on the bottom. I'll make that decision later. Now the most recruit I'm going to get this turn is four, so that'll help me figure out what to do with a tuned Tectonic Transducer. Okay, uh, two attack, and then outwit, smash two. I've outwitted because I have a four cost, a three cost, and a zero cost, and if I play Hex Bolt, it's a two cost. So I get to smash two. Let's discard one of these shield agents to get two more attack. Okay, so if I play Alter Reality, uh, I get to discard a card and then do Dark Memories because of Chaos Magic. So once again, I have a uh, red and a blue, and nothing here I can recruit can change that unless I get five recruit, which I'm not going to. So let's just get as much as I can get to recruit here. The top card of my deck is... All right, um, I guess I'll discard it even though it won't give me any more Dark Memories power. So let's do that. Let's uh, get two attack for Dark Memories. And then if I play my Shield Trooper, that'll give me seven attack enough to fight death. Now, there's good news and bad news here. The good news is that I can fight him. The bad news is the fight effect is pretty bad. Once again, each other player reveals their hand and KO is one of the heroes that costs one or more. Now check this out. Two, three, four, five, six, recruit. I am so close. I am so close to getting Berserker Rage, but I'll have to KO something. Either I'll KO the sidekick, which means I'm stuck with two, three, four, five, six, recruit, or I have to KO a shield officer, and then I have four recruit, which makes it a lower chance I'll be able to draw enough to get Berserker Rage. But if I don't fight death this turn, I may not have another chance. So I think I'm going to have to do it. Oh man, okay. Do I want to forego the shield officer now for a chance to recruit them this next turn? Or KO the sidekick, which I'm going to eventually get rid of anyway. If I don't, again, then I'll be stuck with two, three, four, five, six recruit, which won't be enough for anything that I want. You know, I think in the interest of time, I'm going to KO this Maria Hill, hoping the sidekick gives me enough to maybe just get Gambit, but let's do it. So we're going to KO her. And at least death is gone now for the second time. All right, with two recruit. And with two recruit, let's take this Hexbolt to the discard pile. And we ended up not playing Hexbolt from the hero deck, so Hexbolt is just going to enter as we've already revealed it. Okay, so if nothing happens to the streets, in a couple of turns, I can safely take Poison Scarlet Witch here on the right. However, knowing my luck, she's probably going to be nuclear annihilated by that turn. Oh well. All right, this turn is going to be up to this sidekick. But what are we dealing with? Will we explode Scarlet Witch? And we will. That's too bad. Couldn't quite get it. So the streets are destroyed. The bad news is Scarlet Witch has escaped, which means I don't get to gain her as a hero, but also I have to KO something from the HQ, making the dwindling hero deck even smaller. Let's take out Hexbolt. Repulsor Rays might be more useful attack power-wise. And we have... Okay, Stack the Deck is back. That can be useful to trigger Dark Memories as well as, you know, get things set up. But we do only have 18 cards left in the hero deck. All right, so let's see if this sidekick can do us some justice. If I can draw a Shield Officer and another Shield Agent, I can get Gambit. So we'll see what we get. First card is... Okay, Wolverine. Second card is... A Shield Agent. Not what I wanted. Let's just play everything we have. Was it worth taking death out? I don't know at this point, but with three attack and five recruit, I have a limited number of options, but I can get Poison Sabertooth this turn, but I'll have to spend a shard to do it. Actually, I can get him in a couple of turns safely because there are no streets left. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna fight the Church of Truth and gain that shard. Now, even though I'm trying to recruit stuff, I am gonna start taking out a shield agent because I'm gonna recruit a shield officer, I think. So let's burn two shards. One was hiding behind my turn counter, so just so you can see it. Uh, let's burn those two. And courtesy of the Church of Truth, we're going to KO the Shield Agent. And the Church of Truth is gone. So, with five recruit, I'm going to take another Shield Officer to replace the one we got rid of, and kind of the other Shield Agent. I know I said last time was the last one, but I didn't expect to get rid of one. And here we go. It is a standard. And I wonder where all the special ones are. But we can take a, a sidekick now. I was considering getting Stack the Deck for the left, but for the uh, Dark Memories trigger, I think it's too valuable for the right side. So let's get a sidekick. And who do we get? Okay, another instinct one, great. That'll definitely help me out later. Okay, I'm hoping I can get Poison Sabertooth over here, start KOing some things before, you know, the rest of the game happens. 
All right, we got a lot of stuff here. I'm not quite sure what we can do with that yet. And we have another henchman. I feel like we must have gone through almost all the henchmen by now. Okay, so what order do I want to do this in? I don't have any other tech card, so it makes sense for me to play this first so I can trigger the plus two attack on pound for pound. But let's do it. Let's draw a card, and that card is... Oh, awesome. That'll be great. I've got plenty of Avengers heroes out here, so I get to trigger both of her effects. But we'll do that later. Let's play pound for pound. Okay, first I draw a card. Let's see what we get here. Okay, another shield agent. And then I get to attack for finally playing a tech card first. If only warp time and space had the chance of revealing a build the suit, then I could instantly transform it, but I know I've KO'd all the rest of the tech cards. That's my only chance. Okay, here's the bad news about Dark Memories this turn. This is my discard pile. I have no deck here. So unless I can discard a card when I play Alter Reality, it's going to make me reshuffle everything. So maybe I should have held off on drawing these cards. But I've already drawn cards and I revealed identity, so I can't go back now. But uh, let's, let's do this in a slightly different order. We're going to play Hexbolt for one attack. I don't get to do the effect. However, it's time to warp time and space. So here we go. Oh, actually, let me check my discard pile before I do this. All right, I have tech, covert, ranged, and that's it. So I've only got three. The other two are still out here. Here we go. Reveal the top three cards of the hero deck. One, two, three, and get to put one of them in my hand. Which one do I want? Card Shark will let me draw uh, X-Men here. I don't really want that. Alter Reality will give me two more recruit and dark memories again. But again, I'm going to have to shuffle everything in, so that's not going to work. And then I could play Hexbolt to play the top card of my other side's deck. I think I'd rather gain Alter Reality because I'll be able to stack Dark Memories later. So this goes into my hand. They go back on the top or bottom now, in any order. I'm going to put them on the top because I think I'd like Blue to be KO'd before Covert when Dark Phoenix does her thing. But at the same time, I don't know how many blue cards are left in the deck. And if uh, both of these blues come out when I recruit these rares... You know what? No, no, I changed my mind. I'm going to put these in the bottom because I don't want the game to end after I KO the Covert one. So let's put them on the bottom. How about that? And I trigger Dark Memories. So I get three attack from Dark Memories. Awesome. Now, here's the hard part. Um, I have... Let me play my gray cards here. That gave me four recruits. So I can definitely take Build the Suit this turn when I play these Alter Realities. And I have no other choice. I'm going to play the first one. And with no way to get more cards into my deck, I'm not going to build this into the massive attack I wanted. Even if I did, that would only be 12 attack and it wouldn't be enough to hit Dark Phoenix. So let's just do this two recruit. Now in order to reveal the top card of my deck, i got to shuffle everything in, so let's do that. This might actually be a good thing because I know I have more alter realities than this. And now I have tech, strength, ranged, covert, all four of those in my discard. I just need to get an instinct over here which uh, would mean I have to take one of these two. So maybe I should take Gambit over here on the right for that last Dark Memories color. But we'll get to that in a second. Okay, so the top card of the deck is Shield Trooper. Let's discard it. And Dark Memories gives me nothing for this because all I have is a Shield Trooper. But now let's play the second one for two more recruit. Top card on my deck now is a Wound. Cool, I get to get rid of this. Well, not get rid of it, but get it out of the way. I discard it and I get Dark Memories again. Nothing for this one, but that's all right. So here's the situation. I've got eight recruit, and I have Gambit here. I don't have any instant cards over here. So let's, let's say I played Ultra Reality this turn. I had all these in my discard. I could get 10 attack if I had Gambit in my discard. Let me take a look at him. Reveal the top card of your deck. You get attack equal to that card's cost. If I can do Ultra Reality to get the card here I want and play Gambit when I want, that might actually help me out. I keep revealing cards or discarding it. And if I can get Warp Time and Space on top, for example, I can get seven attack. Or three attack for a shield officer, which isn't bad. So let's let's say I play two alter realities with full dark memories, besides Gambit, for uh, four attack each. Then I play Gambit, that's 12. And then I can kind of set up what card I draw. I can get enough to hit Dark Phoenix. So yeah, let me actually recruit this on the right-hand side. I think that's the right move here. Now what are we replacing him with? Okay, another Chaos Magic. I thought those might be farther down, but I'm glad one showed up. I'd like to get that. Okay, I don't want to gain Sabretooth on the right-hand side here. I want him for the left, so let me uh, fight this Church of Truth and gain the Shard. And the Church of Truth is gone. Okay, I'm setting myself up for something good with all these colors here in the discard pile. I have all five colors now, so the next Dark Memories are going to be pretty powerful. And short two recruit once again. This is taking forever. It might take too long, and I can't even fight Sabretooth now. Oh, and there's Pestilence. His fight effect makes you reveal the top three cards of your deck with the other player. Discard each of those cards that cost one or more and put the rest back in any order. This could really mess up the turns, the few turns I have left, so I want to avoid fighting him if possible. Now, what are we dealing with here? 
Six Recruit is kind of not great. I still want to save Stack the Deck for the other side. That'll really help with getting that Dark Memory stuff to, to sync up. And I don't have to recruit anything. It'll only make the hero deck get smaller. So let's take a sidekick and that's it here. Hope for a better next turn. Sidekick is a standard sidekick. Kind of feels bad to only do that, but uh, there's not much option for me. I really got to get rid of these shield agents. They're really starting to mess things up. Oh no. Now the rooftops are gone. So I might lose Poison Sabretooth if I can't take out Pestilence this turn. But looking at my attack, I should be able to take him out. Uh, let's play Stack the Deck. Draw two cards, put a card from your hand on top of your deck. The top two cards are a Shield Trooper and a Shield Agent. Four Recruit is great for getting Chaos Magic this turn, and if I discard the Shield Trooper, I'm going to end up with two four attack, which is not enough to fight Pestilence, but I probably just can spend my Shard. I could use Smash 2, but that would mean I wouldn't have four Recruit and one attack. So let's put the Shield Trooper on top of the deck, and that way I can still get the amount of attack I need. Okay, so I'll just play this for two attack without using Smash. Then I'll play Repulsor Rays for another two attack, and we'll play all our shield agents. Okay, so we're gonna spend this one shard for an additional fifth attack, and now I can fight Pestilence. Here we go, each other player reveals the top three cards of their deck, discards each of those cards that cost one or more, and put the rest back in any order. Let's see what we end up doing. The top card of the deck is the only card in the deck. It is Healing Factor, so we discard that, and now we have to shuffle our entire discard pile. Actually, I'm not sure I'm supposed to reveal this. Actually, I'm not supposed to... Actually, I don't know if I'm supposed to reveal this and put it aside and then show two more. But uh, I'm not sure how that goes. I'm going to discard the first one, shuffle my discard, and then reveal the second two. I think that makes sense. It doesn't say to set them aside or anything. I'm going to do them one at a time. Okay, here we go. The top two cards here are an agent and an officer. Uh, that's going to hurt me with the recruit thing, but I do have to discard that. Oh! I do only discard the shield officer, because this one costs zero. And Pestilence is gone. Now, if I can hold out one more turn without a Scheme Twist, I can definitely take Poison Sabretooth next turn. But right now, i got to figure out what I'm recruiting, and I think it's going to be Chaos Magic. The opportunity for a little more attack, maybe, or some card draws or whatever, could be good. So let me recruit this. What do we have in her place? All right. Card Shock. I don't really want that. And here's why. It says reveal the top card of your deck. If it's an X-Men hero, draw it. Okay for the left-hand side with Wolverine, but even so, it's not an instinct card. I only have Gambit over here, I think. Okay, can we get Poison Sabretooth? Let's find out. It's a really good hand here, so hopefully this is not a scheme twist. Otherwise, we're going to have to lose Poison Sabretooth. <laughs> That's not great because we're going to KO all the cards except for one color now. Let's see what color we are KOing. I really hope it is blue. It is not blue. That's too bad. All right, no more dark memories for me, I guess. I got plenty of them, though. Um, I did get one, two, three, four, five, six cards only KO'd this time. These are all gone. Looks like I got most of them. There are only nine cards left in the hero deck. That is really not a lot, so I really have to be careful how many I recruit. I just want Berserker Rage and then maybe stack the deck, and I think I have to be done there. But if the next card's a Master Strike, it's all over anyway. But at least I can do some damage this turn. Let's start with Healing Factor. No wounds to KO, but I get to attack. Now we'll do Keen Senses. I get one attack, and let's draw a card. Hopefully a Wolverine to keep this chain going, but no, it's a Shield Agent instead. But I still have Frenzied Slashing to play. This will give me two attack, and now I get to draw two cards. Here we go. Okay, one and two. So now we'll do our other Healing Factor. Two more attack here. No wounds to KO. And now we'll play Zabu. KO a card from your hand or discard pile. We're going to go ahead and KO the shield agent right here. And Zabu goes away. And what are we left with recruit-wise? Five recruit. Again, not eight. Not enough for that. But I can fight and gain Poison Sabretooth now, which is a two-attack card that lets me KO the top card of my deck if I want. If I play an instinct first, let's fight him and gain him as a hero. Luckily, he can't bond with anybody. And even if he could, the streets are destroyed. Now, I definitely have enough shield officers at this point, and I don't want to recruit too many things from the HQ because we only have the nine cards left, so let me go ahead and uh, get a sidekick. Here we go, standard sidekick for me, and that's where we'll end it. Okay, so potential for some powerful dark memories here, but let's see what we have as our villain card. If this is a Master Strike, the game is over, and it is not over yet. We have Poison Captain America, an instinct card, good for the left side. 
it can't symbiote bond with anything in the city, uh, and if you fight it, you gain it as a hero, and it works just like regular Captain America. You get one attack for each color of hero you have. Now, the bottom effect is better for the right-hand side, with the Dark Memories making me get a bunch of colors in my deck, so I think this is actually better for the right-hand side. Maybe I'll fight it this turn. Let's play Chaos Magic first. I'm going to reveal the top card of the hero deck. That card is Hexbolt. I may play this this turn if I like a copy of it for one attack and then the effect if I like which I might do but now we're going to alter reality for two attack to recruit I mean the top card of my deck is a shield agent I'm going to go ahead and discard this and let's trigger dark memories I think I have all five colors like I started with so let's make sure okay we've got tech covert ranged and at the very bottom yeah strength and here it is, Instinct. So we have five attack from this Dark Memories, if only I had a second one. Now let's play the copy of Hexbolt over here. So I'm going to play a copy of this. It gives me one attack, and, well, let's just look at what the other Hexbolt I already have is. Let's put this in the bottom of the hero deck. So we'll play the copy, and then this. So in total, I get two attack, and then I only get one effect because one triggers the other. Discard the top card of any player's deck, so I could do my own. Let's do my own. Let's see what this is. The top card is... Oh, it's a Shield Trooper. Okay, well, I'll discard it. And I get to play a copy of it, so I'll get one more attack. Now, everything else is going to give me two more attack and one more recruit for a total of 10 attack and three recruit. Not enough to hit Dark Phoenix, but I can fight and gain Poison Captain America as a hero. A lot of wasted attack here. Now, should I take... Yeah, I'm going to take Stack the Deck. If I do have time left, this might help me set some things up, so let's take it. And in its place, we are going to get Card Shark. Eight cards left in the hero deck. Can I survive? I really hope that last Master Strike is way down at the bottom of the deck. Let's find out. Okay, by standard. But it does go to Symbiotic Armored Dark Phoenix. A little bit of a breather is nice. All right, so I've got five recruit potential. I just need three more. Can this sidekick do it for me? Let's see, what do I get? First card is one. Okay, so I need either a Shield Officer or a Wolverine that can draw some cards. And this one is, oh, exactly what I didn't want. My recruit is five, and I said I wouldn't take any more shield officers, so it's going to be another sidekick for me. Unless I want to take Card Shark. No, I don't want to take Card Shark, because a good chance at the top of my deck would be a shield agent or an officer, and that would be kind of a waste. So let's take a sidekick. We get another standard. These should work out for me eventually, right? Come on, the next hand's got to be good after this. As I'm shuffling, I notice that Wolverine and Scarlet Witch are featured prominently on my mat, so it's kind of perfect. Okay, we are stalling. Oh no. Well, so much for stalling. We have our last Master Strike. You know what that means. KO the top card of the hero deck. The top card of the hero deck is a blue card. And guess what? All of the rest of the cards are blue. So we're going to KO everything here. And that's going to leave zero cards in the hero deck, which means Dark Phoenix wins and we lose. Well, with this scheme and mastermind combination, I'm not super surprised this happened. I think I did the best I possibly could. I wish I could have gotten my hands on Berserker Rage earlier, but I just was not drawing those shield officers together, unfortunately. But it was fun to try and tackle this setup. I did post the full setup in the description below, so if you want to give this a try, let me know how it went for you. Post it in the comments. I can't wait to read those and see how you all also lost to Dark Phoenix, blowing things up and causing nuclear Armageddon. If you like this playthrough and you'd like to be notified when we do more, or if you'd like to get the news on the latest Legendary Expansion info, please hit subscribe, I'd really appreciate it. If you want to follow us over at twitch.tv slash bageltopgames, we do live streams of Legendary games every Thursday and Saturday at 2pm Pacific. I hope to see you there as well. And I've got more edited videos coming. Thank you for being here for this one. I will see you next time. Take care, everyone.